The Maracanã Stadium is a special place. It was built in 1950 for a FIFA World Cup and was the largest stadium the world has ever seen. But there are those who say that bad spirits stalk the corridors, reminders of a day the nation would rather forget. Brazil was chosen as host for the first World Cup after the war, and for four years, the nation worked feverishly towards the big festival. Six cities hosted matches, but the center of activity was Rio de Janeiro, then the nation's capital. It would stage Brazil's first match, and according to the script, would witness their eventual triumph. In the depths of FIFA Football Mundial's considerable archives are the memories of some of the men central to the tournament. Everything was well organized in both Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. We went to Araxia to prepare. We stayed there for a month, just training, and we forged a good team. By 1950, football was Brazil's obsession. In their then traditional all-white kit, the team was prepared only for victory, and they swept aside most of their opponents, hitting 21 goals in their first five games. They won 4-0 against Mexico, destroyed Sweden 7-1, and flattened Spain 6-1. Chief among the scorers with eight goals was Vasco da Gama centre forward, Ademir de Menezes. During the competition, Brazil started really well. We won against Mexico, although after that we drew with Switzerland in Sao Paulo. But then we won against Yugoslavia at the Maracanã. But soon after that came the final between Brazil and Uruguay and we shouldn't spend too much time talking about that. Uruguay had only entered the World Cup once before in 1930, and they'd won it. And now, after an easy passage, they were the ones to challenge Brazil in that final match. Well, it's like any other football match. Before the match, you would have to analyse what possibilities there might be both for and against you just as everybody does nowadays. Brazil was the clear favourite, that's what I thought. But there was a possibility that Uruguay could almost match them, although they were the giants who were everyone's choice. 200,000 people, the largest crowd in football history, came to the Maracanã that day. This World Cup was slightly different to the rest. This was the last match of a final group, so Brazil only needed a draw to become champions. And when Friassa scored early in the second half, the nation rejoiced. There was a huge outpouring of emotion by the supporters when Friassa scored the goal. There were screams and fireworks. But look, there was also a lot of gamesmanship from the Uruguayans. They never restarted the game quickly. That wasn't what we wanted. They always tried to do the opposite of what we wanted, and that's how they took the initiative. Uruguay's captain Varela complained to the linesman about the goal and deliberately took his time. When the match resumed, the noisy cauldron of the Maracanã had quietened down, and Brazil's impetus had gone. There were still over 40 minutes left, and now the force was with the men in blue. Brazilian team on the verge of their greatest achievement in front of their largest crowd started to cave in. Schiaffino equalised, and there was worse to follow, much worse. Alcides Gigia beat Barbosa at his near post, and Uruguay were leading by two goals to one. When they equalised, the crowd was already nervous. They became quiet. The support dried up and stopped in the last few minutes. Then, when Uruguay scored the second goal, there was absolute silence in the packed Maracanã. It may be difficult to imagine, but that's what happened. Brazil had ten minutes to equalise. They failed to do it. Uruguay, for the second time, were world champions. Brazil's great day had finished in unimagined, impossible despair. 
Immediately after the match, all our players were crying with happiness, while the Brazilians cried with sadness. There was no doubt, the Brazilians were all in tears. It just demonstrates how hard it was for them to have lost that match. It wasn't good. I remember that I went to the dressing room just like everyone else. But as soon as I could, I went away in my car and just kept driving. I ended up going to Itacuruza. That's an island not far away from Rio de Janeiro. And I just stayed there for 15 days after the match. I phoned Vasco da Gama to tell them where I was. But in reality, I just had to get away from everybody. Uruguay's captain, Obdulio Varela, accepted the trophy from FIFA president Gilles Remé. Brazil would have to wait for another day. They built the Maracana Stadium for Brazil to be the champions. That day there was an incredible atmosphere, totally different, something you only occasionally get nowadays. It was a fantastic party. Even the Brazilian government was involved. There were speeches made before the match, and everyone imagined that Brazil would be the champions. But as it turned out, Brazil lost, and I think it all turned into some sort of national tragedy. Ademir de Menezes, the top scorer of the 1950 tournament, never played another World Cup match. He passed away in 1996. Juan Schiaffino moved to Milan in 1954 and became as famous in Italy as he was in Uruguay. He died in 2002 at the age of 77. And in both Brazil and Uruguay, that day, July the 16th, 1950, will never, ever be forgotten. <laughs>